Hello, hello! This is uh, RootCats for NerdStomper.com and we're gonna be analyzing a Zerg versus Zerg here. Um, the most important thing that I want to focus on on this video tutorial is gonna be um, keeping map control and control of the game in Zerg versus Zerg. Zerg versus Zerg is my least favorite matchup because it seems like a Russian roulette sometimes. Um, there's a bunch of things that can go wrong in Zerg versus Zerg because if you're being too greedy you could lose to an all-in, if you're not being too greedy you could lose to the greedier player if you get a uh, X it can be countered by Y and Z and vice versa so it's very very uh, hard to get a good game sense of uh, Zerg versus Zerg as it's a very awkward and weird matchup where all-ins are super effective sometimes and uh, you know just being incredibly greedy is super effective sometimes uh, I've been trying to find my way <coughs> out of this vicious circle for a while and it is incredibly hard but uh, I'm gonna be showing you one of my uh, favorite strategies so to say in Cirque vs Cirque which is uh, getting some mutas for map control but also I'll be showing you um, some Jedi mind tricks so that you can stay a little bit ahead of the game and have a better game sense in general of what your opponent can and cannot do while playing you in a matchup of Zerg vs Zerg. As you can see I am dropping a 15 pool 15 gas it's pretty standard build um, another very standard build is what he's doing on this particular map uh, 15 hatch it's uh, pretty much safe against everything that's not a super super fast pool so it's a small risk that he's already taking but uh, of course my pool was very standard as I wasn't gonna risk anything and as an earlier pool um, is easily countered by a more standard pool like the spawning pool that I'm getting right now so already right off the bat um, you can see how Cirque vs Cirque can be a little frustrating sometimes um, just by the openings there's a lot of things that are um, left laying around on the table now uh, he has an overlord scouting me and I'm gonna use that to my advantage cats well, let's pause here how could you possibly use scouting information that he has to your own advantage I am about to show you right now I am now dropping a bailing nest in his overlord vision so if we go to his camera he is well aware that I am dropping this bailing nest and if he doesn't want to die to bailings he's gonna have to prepare accordingly he only sees two circlings go out but it's all I need to show him as he can see the bailing nest he has to be expecting bailings at this point and as a reaction let's pause here for a second he's gonna drop a spine crawler as you can see and he's dro gonna drop a really ro fast roach warren one of the advantages of dropping the hatch first is he's usually gonna be ahead and uh, economy count especially if I go for a tech pattern which is exactly what I'm planning to do so dropping that bailing nest and then canceling it once his overlord is out of range is gonna make him prepare for something that is not really coming and it's gonna make him spend resources that he didn't wanna or wasn't planning to spend uh, of course roaches are gonna be incredibly effective uh, in Cirque vs Cirque but most importantly they're gonna be really effective in uh, against Baneling play so he's probably dropping this roach warren a little bit sooner than he wanted to and this spine crawler is definitely a lot sooner than he wanted to he could easily defend if he had not seen the Baneling nest he could easily defend against circlings with um, whatever he can pop out of this uh, hatcheries uh, whether it was circlings or whatever else or he could easily just go for a more um, economy and macro based um, build so you can see that I did two different things I showed him aggression when really I was going for the defense so I am dropping a spine crawler, crawler in the back of my base cats why did you drop that spine crawler so back behind like that's not gonna be effective well yeah it's not um, Likely for me though, spine crawlers can uproot and reposition. So the whole idea behind dropping that spine crawler all the way in the back here is that uh, he could not see it with his overlord. 
So again, I was showing him aggression when really I was going for defense. And cats, why would you need a spine crawler though? It doesn't look like uh, he's planning to be aggressive. He's being defensive as well. Are you stupid? No, I'm not stupid. But as, as a reaction to my um, early aggression, that is not really early aggression because it's never coming, uh, he's going to have a lot of units, is my thought process. Or he could potentially have a lot of units. So um, I will need, once he realizes that there's nothing coming his way, I will need some static defense in order to uh, drone up and be as greedy as I can. I do have two uh, queens in case he tries to counter the banelings with banelings, which is not a bad choice, and it's very common, so that I can block my ramp in case some banelings or circling run-ins uh, come my way. As you can see, he is just now scouting, and he has to be wondering at this point, where the hell is that bust? I'm waiting for that bust. At this point, he's starting to realize that it's not coming, and uh, he is starting to uh, make some drones again. But again, we forced, or we, we forced him to make units, to make static defense, to make a building earlier than he wanted to, and to make less drones that, than he wanted to, just by showing him a banging nest that costed us very little uh, money to cancel right after. So now I'm gonna get some links for map control but um, my main is essentially saturated as uh, they ha there's uh, 16 drones mining it it's basically optimal and I don't need nothing uh, I don't need much more for that so now I can start making some links I will continue to drone of course because I do plan on the later game where I will need an expansion but also I'm dropping a spire and let's pause here for a second you can see he's still in the dark and my speed links are gonna be a lot faster and uh, as you can see I already have speed links which is uh, gonna allow me to catch the circlings and kill them before they can gather too much information and it's gonna once again grant me control of the game at this point in time I decide what can and can't be done and I have map control allowing uh, myself to know exactly what's going on. So with these links on the watchtower, um, as they just run by the watchtower, we could see that uh, he might be moving out with the roaches. I can see exactly how many roaches he has and prepare accordingly. Let's pause for a second. I am now dropping an expansion. As you can see, the drone counts are pretty much identical. He's only two drones ahead. And I say only two drones ahead because at this point in the game, he would like to be a lot more ahead in drones because I am going for really, really, really fast tech. Um, once again, thanks to my bailing nest, I was able to keep up with his drone count on one base uh, compared to his two bases and um, win on the economical race and in the map, or I mean in the tech race and in the map control race. So uh, there's three separate races going on here. Uh, one in which he's ahead, which is the better economy as he has an extra base uh, a lot e uh, earlier than me. But he has a lot of units that are just not being put to use and there is really nothing much that he can do because once my mutalisks are out, they could crush his army of roaches if they so decided to come my way. Since they are not coming my way, instead my mutalisks will do some harassing and of course continue to grant me map control. Let's um, analyze what map control is gonna do for me this game really quick. Um, for one thing, once I have mutas out, he cannot move until he, d he has, he cannot attack me or move until he's ready and has an army that can effectively deal with the mutalisks. If he decided to push out with these roaches, they would all die before they get to my base. They would do zero damage and they would be just a waste. So he's forced to stay on his base and uh, spend some more money on static defenses. By no means did I make Muta uh, hoping to kill him with them. Uh, of course, in many games they will be caught off guard and you'll be able to keep kill them with the uh, Mutas. But, uh, I only made six mutalisks, and let's pause here for a second. I only made six mutalisks for a simple reason. If I made 20 mutalisks, he would still have enough static defenses, queens, transfusions, uh, three support crawlers per base. 
he would still be able to deal with the mutas in this exact same fashion almost, except I would have spent all of my resources, I wouldn't have an expansion, I would have essentially spent 1700 more minerals and 1700 more gas in absolutely nothing. Instead I am just making 6 mutas, which is still a threat, he still can't move until he gets enough anti-air, and it grants me map control so that I can start catching back up in the economy race. So as you can see, pretty much at this point, the game is almost evened out. He's still a few workers ahead, but not, not too many. And he's going to be a little bit supply ahead, but he's going to continue to get uh, supply blocked thanks to my uh, mutalisks harassing. Of course, if I have the units, there's no reason to not use them. Um, so I'm going to go around roaming and do as much as I can. Now you will see that I dropped two EVO chambers. Why do you drop two evil chambers, cats? Well, because I know that he cannot move. So um, another race is about to start, and that's the upgrade race. And uh, I'm going to be well ahead of, uh, of his upgrades, as he only has one evil chamber um, in with one upgrade going now. And I'm going to get rolling on two upgrades at the same time to catch up and eventually um, win the race of the upgrades. On every other count, I'm still 5 drones behind, but it's not really that big of a deal as long as I can keep my map control and I can rule the, the way the game is headed, so to say. So, uh, for part 2, and uh, to see the later game transitions of my build, and how uh, the Mutalisks are going to play a big role in this game uh, for the next uh, few minutes, follow me to part 2 of this video tutorial of Zerg vs Zerg.